we're just going to wing it. And then if we have to record it later, we will. Okay. So what we want to talk about is doing a self bound quilt is what we want to do. So we have done self binding blankets a bunch. And if you have taken classes with me at any of the shops along the way, we have done them at a lot of them. Um, I love the self binding blanket. I think it's a super great little uh, project to do. And usually when we do it, we do it with cuddle and cuddle. So we did a tutorial for it about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. We did one and we did this little guy, um, which is regular cuddle. So this is a print cuddle, digital cuddle. And this is the Lux Cuddle Hide. And so we put the two of these together. You can make this in any size. We showed how to do it. It's great. But the thing is, is that you don't have to just put cuddle on the inside. You can put all sorts of things. So once we create this frame, we're good and we can put anything on the inside. The thing is that sometimes people want to actually put quilts on the inside and you don't want to just put a hunk of cotton. So we're going to show you some different options on being able to make that work with batting and with um, a super secret ingredient later. Okay. All right. So that's what we're doing is that project basically. So what I have is the sample to show you if I can open this up a little bit. So this is a throw that I made. Let's see if you can show this hawk, this corner. So this is a quilt that I made. It's a clamshell quilt. I had it long armed and then I did the corners and the edges with the self binding method. So you sent it off to be long armed with the quilt top and yep. the sparkle cuddle back and the batting. They made the sandwich yep. and didn't finish it off. Right. And then I'm going to show you how you're going to do that. Okay. Okay. So you can see it's all quilted beautifully on the back with the sparkle cuddle, which we were talking about. They have a ton of here. They have a bunch of the colors. There's green and red and white and blue. And there's a bunch of colors and they have them. So check out their website. And the sparkle itself comes in silver, gold, and multi. Multi. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can get all sorts of fun things. Combos. So it is great for a quilt back. And I don't know if you can actually see how beautiful it is. Oh, it's it showing pretty, up on cam pretty well. It's pretty magical I and I really it. like it. So this is a great way to be able to finish off a quilt that you've done that is easier, in my opinion, than doing a cotton binding. And you can absolutely do that is just have them bound, you know, squared off and make do a cotton binding on it. But this is super easy and lets you finish your quilt basically in a day. Um, even if it's a big one, I think I did this in a, maybe about two hours or so, which is really fast for binding a quilt. So I'm very happy about that. All right. With so. all that kerfuffle at the beginning, yeah. what happens if they share the video? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Share the video. At the end, we'll give away a kit. I'm so good at forgetting this. Um, so, yeah, we'll give away a beginner wow. box at the end of the show. And you can, um, you can enter to win by just sharing the video with your Facebook friends and sewing groups and all that sort of stuff. All right? Okay. All right. So, share the video. All right, so let's talk about what we put in the front of it first. That's what I like, kind of what I want to dig into a little bit um, because that front part can be all sorts of things. So you can do just a cotton panel, which I forgot in the car too. <laughs> it might be actually in that in that box, but you can do it with just a cotton panel. You can do a pieced quilt, and you can do um, you can do flannel is the other one that we get asked a bunch. So I wanted to talk about flannel just a little bit. Okay, so come on down. Let's look at it. So this we'll talk about in a second. This is a flannel that I um, got here at Bits and Pieces. It's from Henry Glass and it is just, just a flannel. But what I wanted to show you is that with the cuddle, we just stick the, the front cuddle in and it's fine. With flannel, you want to pre-wash it first. Okay, so this is some that I did not pre-wash and I did pre-wash and you can tell because of all the fray, okay? So flannel loves to fray. So it will shrink because it's, it's frayed a, a bunch at the edges. So you can uh, do surging at the edge if you want to to keep that. But what I really wanna show you is how much it shrinks. So I'm gonna line up this part here first and get my little lines to match. And then we're gonna come down here. And I'm gonna show you how different it is. Okay, so this is how much this piece has shrunk up. So if you do this, and if you can imagine, this is only like a 12 inch piece. And if you do this as a 60 inch piece or a 40 inch piece, it's going to be a lot different. You're going to be probably an inch off, which will make your front do funny things. So make sure that you pre-wash any flannel that you use so that it is the size that you want. And I would recommend that you pre-wash it in a hot water and dry it and get it shrunk as much as possible because your cuddle is not going to shrink at all. So when you mix this with cuddle, they're both going to be at that same level of not ever shrinking again. Okay, so flannel, you can absolutely use that. All right, here's my batting. 
I want to show you a couple other little versions. All right. So this is kind of what we're going to talk about today is a couple of versions of this. So this is a small little quilt that I did. This is pieced. So I did just some, I used the um, cloth works. It's called Living the Dream. And it is a really cute little um, collection that has a bunch of little panels. So see, I took these little panels and then I pieced them. And then I made a self-binding corner. And it just goes in here. All right. So that's what this that's is. That's an intentionally unfinished corner. Yeah, exactly. Got it. So we'll talk about this that's more. finished corner. Um, yep. As I go. So let's talk about these corners. So if you can see on this one, this is about an inch. Actually, I can get out my ruler and I can measure. Okay. And we can see the differences. So one of the things that I love about the South Binding Blanket. So this one is a two inch one. That was an inch. That was in the half inch. Okay. Right. So one of the things I really like about the self binding blanket is that you can literally do it any size. So this corner can be your binding can be any size. So if I wanted to, I could make this an inch. I could make it two inches on a cotton quilt. I could, I like to do them about a half an inch, but you can actually do it any size that you want to. Okay. So let's talk about how you make that corner. That's going to kind of be the first thing you need to decide is how big you're gonna make your binding. So when you're doing a cotton quilt or you're doing a cotton binding, it's usually a quarter inch or a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch um, cotton binding that goes all the way around. With this, with cuddle, you don't wanna try to do a quarter inch binding because it will make you go insane. So don't go smaller than a half an inch, <laughs> but you can do any size from a half an inch up to, if you wanna do a four inch border, you totally could, okay? It's really up to you. Part of it that, um, makes that whatever that works is how much border you have left over. So if you have it long armed, make sure that you ask them to leave that border nice and big. So, you know, give me an extra six inches all the way around or whatever. So make sure that you've got an ample border all the way around. Then you can kind of decide on how big you want your binding. All right. So we're going to talk about a couple things here. So you one of them. Does the backing need to be bigger and the batting need to be bigger? Yes. Yes. So if you go to, if you go to my website, there should be a link somewhere. So if you go to TeresaCoats.com, there's a blog post that I just did that has a little um, PDF that I made for some quilt um, guild presentations that I've done about how to do this. So go ahead and download this and it will talk about some math that we're going to do. So this is what we're talking about here. So the finished size of your cotton quilt and then the bat, the batting size of it and the cotton backing. So you're going to need to make it bigger. So this you'll have, you'll have to put this size in and then we'll figure out these other numbers. Okay. So the desired width of the binding, you're going to put the numbers in here and we're just going to work our way through. So let's say on this one, we're going to do Let's do a funky one since we haven't done that. I haven't done a three quarter inch. Let's try that. Okay. Okay. okay so we're going to do a three. You're going to make inch. us all do math this morning. Is that what I just heard? Yep. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good morning. I was told it's there would be no, day. I, would, I was told there would be no math. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> I am going to do the thing that drives everybody a little bit crazy. And it's really just because I've got more. I've got blades. Oh, it's you okay. Didn't see her do that. I nope. didn't have them. Nope. Never cut paper with your rotary cutter. Actually, what I do suggest is that you uh, cut it with the, you can cut paper with this, but use the blades that have started to get a little bit dull and then mark them as paper and then only use them for paper until they're too dull to really use. Okay. So we're going to start with this. So I've got this corner. So all I did here is I made this a nice square corner. This is going to be just like the corner of our quilt. So we want to have it nice and square. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark it. Mark one side find my spot so this is my three quarter so here's the quarter half inch three quarter i'm gonna go ahead and line it up against the edge of my straight edge here okay so there i've got a three quarter inch i'm gonna turn this i'm gonna do the same thing again along this edge and mark it three quarters of an inch okay so now i've got three quarters of an inch on either side. Now I need to draw a line across here. So this is the part that always gets confusing for people. So what you need to do is find a 45 degree angle on your, your uh, acrylic ruler here. And I'm gonna take and I'm gonna line that up on one of these lines, okay? So here's my drawn line and here is the line on my acrylic ruler. I'm gonna put them together 
and I want it so that I have a triangle up here. Okay, so I'm going to take this off and show you again. So when I put my ruler down, I'm going to put it so that it's creating a triangle here. And then I'm going to manipulate this so that it gets on the line. And then I'm going to shove it up until it intersects right there. Okay, so this can be a little bit confusing for people. So really take your time with it. Once you get it, it's actually pretty darn easy. But it does take a little bit. So one of the things is you need this line to come off the side. If I try to do this with the line that's here, so I try to move this. Here's my here's my 45. One, I can't make a triangle because it's like I could, but then if I move it back to my 45, the triangle's gone, right? Also, it just lands in the corner. And this is what people like, like to do that is not the right way, okay? Because then I can only draw half my line. Use the line that comes out of the side of your ruler. All right. So that's really important. You're going to draw the line all the way across. You have a tiny little triangle now. I'm going to go ahead and mark that. And I'm going to say it's a three-quarter inch self-binding blanket. Okay. Big glare. There okay. we go. Now you can see what she Is wrote. that good? Yep. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this off. And now I have a little template for my corner. Okay. So... I'm going to show you on the paper. So can you repeat where we got this again? This this handout, this is on Oh, your, this is from my blog. website. So from TeresaCoats.com, the first blog post that's on there is a link to this video and a link to this um, PDF to download it. Okay. And so this is the part right here that's going to walk you through how to do that. So I would fill in my A that I did up here that I decided it was going to be three quarters of an inch. I'm going to fill in three quarters of an inch here and fill that out. Okay, so that teaches me how to do that. All right, the step, so, this so you end up guy, having, I'm going to see if I can. It's really hard up. to get off the table when it's yeah. flat. And I'm just going to bend them all up. Okay. So that is that's that guy right there. Exactly. The okay. Okay. Got it. So once you make that, you can do it in all sorts of sizes. So I've also got a two inch, and I've got uh, here's a one and a half, and here's my other ones. Okay. I also found these guys. Uh, somewhere and I can't remember. So there, it's so easy brand. So easy brand. All right, what's going on? So only unless you're going to make a million self-binding blankets, would I suggest this? But they do have rulers that actually work. Let's get them over onto something besides the maybe if we is that our blank page? There you go. There we go. Let's try that. Okay. Yeah, that. So then cool. I measured it and it was two inches, as two inch self-binding blanket that gave me this, which. See, it's confusing because it says it's three inches. So I had to write on it. All right. Okay. But you can make a template in all sorts of ways. This is really easy for me. If I'm making a bunch of them and they get, there were some that got smaller, smaller. And it has a teeny tiny one down here. Let's see what that one is. That's a one incher. Okay. All right. So you can make all sorts of templates, any size that you want to do it. So you could do this as like we did three quarters of an inch. You could do um, one inch. You could do one and a half. You could do four, however big you want to do it. I don't suggest you do more than four. Um, that starts getting a little bit weirder looking on a blanket. Um, well, it, might need, really, it might need more top stitching or something. Yeah, you would have to definitely have to top stitch out those corners. But really, it just starts getting, it's just out of proportion. You know, I mean, the scale. Okay. So if you had a really large blanket, you could do that. For the smaller blankets, I tend to like the smaller ones. All right. So, oops, I don't want to get rid of this. So here is my tiny little template that we're going to use. All right. So I just used a piece of manila folder. Uh, I really like the, uh, what do you call it? The like, quilters template plastic. I really like that too. That works really well. You can just use regular paper, but if you use something with a little bit of oomph, then it'll last you and you can use it for all of them. All right. Okay. So set this stuff aside. Put this right here so I don't lose it. Okay. So all of these were done with a half inch binding, and I want to show you the different ways before we practice on the real one. What do I do with the other one? There it is. Okay. So once we're going to, once we figured out what we want to put in the middle, how big we want the binding, we're going to have to figure out how do we quilt it. So there are three different variations variations that we're going to show you today. So when we're doing it with a cuddle blanket, we don't have to do any sort of quilting in the middle because the quilting is for the batting. Okay, so when you're using cotton, 
the cotton, you can use a batting and then you have to quilt it or you cannot use batting. Not using batting with the quilting with the cotton, it looks kind of funny because the, the cotton is so thin. So we have, I have another solution I'll show you in just a minute. But with these, I use the batting. Okay, so I want to show you the difference. So this one is one that I would do. So this would be one that if I got it quilted and it came, so this is all quilted through, right? And then I'm going to get it so that this can be a quarter inch seam allowance because sometimes when we're doing piecing, that's all we have on the outside is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I don't want to try to do a quarter inch of cuddle. So I make it bigger by adding to the batting. So that's what we're doing. And that is that fancy little map that we were talking about. So basically the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my line. Can you guys see that orange line on there very well? Well, well enough. Well, well enough. enough. Yes. So I'm going to show you. So all that I, all right I did is I just got a nice little corner on here. I drew this with my friction pen and drew a line. This is where I want the seam to end. Okay. And then to give me a little bit of extra room, I left the batting longer. Then that gets brought around. Okay. By how much? By it appears to we'll, be. We'll talk about it. it's it's the width of the the binding that you want. So okay. this is going to be a little bit less than one inch, so that it'll curl around and be an inch. Okay. So I'll show you on the other one when we work through the whole thing. Okay. This one is done a little bit differently, in that this one. I quilted just the batting and the cotton. Oh. Okay. So, so when I flip this so over, there's no, there's there's no quilting. quilting. Lines. Okay. So this, it's stuck together because it's spray basted. So I'll unspray baste it here. Okay. So totally not quilted but we did quilt the batting that's under here by quilting it to the cotton. So the cotton still looks like a normal quilt um, and the back doesn't have to have the, have the uh, quilting line through it. All right, so this is an easy way, especially if you're gonna do a smaller one or if you wanna do some complex um, sort of quilting on here for, for this, it's easier for me to do this sort of thing when I'm doing it on my domestic machine. Doing the bigger quilting is a little bit harder trying to move this whole thing through there is just a little bit more for me. So honestly, I usually send my quilts out to be quilted because um, that's the way I prefer. All right, that was a confused look. Is that okay? okay? All right, so these are just a couple of options. So this one was the exact same size. This one, I made the batting a little bit bigger. All right, and that's just different ways of being able to do it. Mostly because I want to add a bigger binding on the one that is a, a larger quilt. So if it's pieced and I only have a quarter of an inch all the way around that I'm supposed to use for the binding, I'm gonna keep the batting bigger to make a bigger binding. So that's what I'm doing. You can also just make a bigger border and go in there. All right. Okay, so let's tackle this. So I just wanna show you some options and then we're gonna do this one here. All right, so this, we're pretending this is a little quilt that I had long armed, okay? So I wanna work through this whole process together. So I just wanna give you an overview. Now we're gonna work through it. All right, use this. All right, so what I wanna figure out is where I want my border to land on this. That's the first thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark. All right, so I've got my quilt, my batting, my backing. And it's all it's all quilted together it's already. Quilted a little bit. I okay. did a little bit of some minimal minimal quilting. Minimal quilting because you know I was doing it last minute. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get myself a line. So I know on here this one is going to be important. I want it to be about a quarter of an inch past this so that this is the same on this side. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my line, and I'm using the friction pen which is a heat resist or heat solving, dissolving, dissolving erasable. Yes. Um, so use heat to make it go away. Mostly it will never show again, but that's why it's a thin, it's a fine liner, which I like a lot. So I'm using that one just so it can kind of hide, but if I need to iron it away, I can. All right, so I wouldn't use my Sharpie for this because it will just show. All right, so now I've got my quarter inch. That's where I want my binding to end. That's what we're trying to do is where the binding will end. Okay, and now I'm just going to draw that line all the way along the side. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this. So this is a good 
example of sometimes you're going to have to rework things. So do you see how this goes wonky over here? Oh, wow. Well. And it's just because it's printed askew. So we're going to we're going to manipulate just a little bit and then it's going to be a little thinner than I would like it to be. And that is definitely something that happens sometimes, especially after it's been quilted, because when it's quilted on a long arm, things will start to shimmy and shake. Okay, so I'm just grabbing a section here. And I know, actually, I want to bring that up just a little bit because I want to catch that corner. So that's what I'm going to kind of look at is where I need to catch it. So what I found when I do this with, um, like I said, previously long-armed quilts, it um, I definitely have places that are weird. So this will be a little bit narrow here. So this would be a reason why this, like a printed panel, might want to be somewhere tucked inside, okay? So that you have to deal with less perfection. So I'm going to go up here again, and I'm just trying to square it up. So I'm going to use my little ruler. Get that little tug. just mark it all the way around so this is the part that you have to really mark this because your edges are going to be weird and they're just going to get hidden underneath but know that they're going to be a little bit weird all right so we go ahead and mark that come over one by more. weird do you mean inconsistent inconsistent okay. yes i'm trying to figure out sorry like, what you're after what, there. what do i mean by weird i mean that they're not perfectly straight like this one seems pretty darn good with these four coming together this one is a little bit a little weird because it seems like it's a quarter inch here and then it gets bigger and down here it's almost a half an inch i see okay yep. and it's just because the fabric if i were to make this work right i'd have to add like a whole lump in this fabric which is not what i want all right so i would like i said suggest things that need to be squared up go in the center away from the edges but this is a great way to find where your edge should be is by trying to make it consistent around a block as well okay so now i got here we did our three quarter inch Right. So that's how big we want our. You mean like the, the plan, the plan, the planned the, the plan binding is, there is three quarters of an inch. Got it. OK. So the next thing I'm going to do is I've got my edges and I'm going to add. Three quarters of an inch. From the line from the drew. line that I just drew. So the way that I do it, let me put it. Let me turn this a little bit so you can maybe see it a little better on this side. There we go. This, this one is easier to see. So I'm going to line it up at the three quarters of an inch. Come on. It really wants to focus on the reflection of the lights. <laughs> That's not where it's supposed to be. So what I like to do is I'm going to, I'm going to line this up my three quarter inch. That's how big my self binding blanket corner is. I'm going to bring this back just a little bit. So it's a little light for lack of a better word. Okay, and really that's just to give it some folding room. Let's see that. Let me see if the purple one will work better. To give it some folding room when I turn it over. A little bit better. Okay. Got it. So this one I could actually mark with the Sharpie if I wanted to. But I'm not going to. Okay. So here I'm going to do the same thing. Here's my three-quarter mark three-quarter mark and now I can make that corner okay I'm just going to keep working my way around looking at what I drew before and making sure that my line stays fairly straight so the batting will not oh I'm gonna have to switch to my shirt because the batting will not be consistent all the way around either but you're going to be surprised because it will work Okay, so there we go. Look at how much easier that is to see. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing and get this a nice square corner. So I'm going to line up what I did before, line it up on the three-quarter here. Okay. Trim it and do this, or mark it and do the same thing. There. Trying to find my orange marker under there. Okay. Okay, one more on the edge over here. Okay, so same thing. Here is my orange line. 
and I want to get that to be a square corner over here. So again, I'm going to line up the edge and then make sure that it's actually coming down square right there. So now I've got it marked. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it. Actually, I want to use my big scissors. Hold on. Otherwise, it's going to take me half an hour to cut all the way around. The magic <laughs> tool bag here. Thank you, Annie. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> my big scissors. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go around this and I'm going to tuck this out of the way so I'm not going to accidentally cut the backing at all. And I'm going to cut right over this line. So I could use my rotary cutter and I would get a really nice straight line. The reason I often just use my scissors is because it's easier for me to not accidentally cut the backing. So when I'm using the scissors, one, if I just start to cut it, I could feel it and I will stop and I could probably fix that tiny little hole that I just made. If I'm using my rotary cutter, I've just whacked off the whole side of it. Okay, so the scissors let me be a little bit more careful, I guess. All right. So now we're trimming the batting down to the square that we want. And I'm trimming on the inside of that line because the Sharpie is so thick that it really does add like an extra eighth of an inch, which will kind of ruin that extra bit that we gave ourselves of the fold. Okay. So again, I've marked the placement line for the binding, and then I marked how big I want the binding. Okay, so, right. so it was the, the alignment line and then the depth of the binding. Which which you you call it like it's a, a little bit small, like right. It's a, so yeah, it's a, a scant, scant three quarters. Scant three quarters. All right. Okay. So now we're at this point. Okay. So now what I have to do is measure again to have enough to fold over. Okay, so I want to do it one more time. I'm going to go ahead and mark it with the Sharpie. So hopefully we can see it. It might be a little bit hard to see on the blue. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to mark it three quarters inch past. I got a little wobbly there. The edge of the binding is what I'm doing. So and in this case, the edge of the batting. At the end of the batting, sorry. Yes. So the edge of the batting, three quarters of an inch is what I've added onto here. Okay. This, if I didn't have just a small table, I would use my big ruler. So I've got that Olipfa that is fabulous. Oh, it's like, what, 36 inches? 36 inches, yeah. which is great for something like this because you get to mark a whole line of it. So again, trying to make sure I have a really nice square corner. Go ahead mark it so you could just chop this off as you go but the reason i don't is because the fabric likes to move so if i go ahead and i mark it first and then i cut it i know that it's actually going to end up fairly square okay so go ahead again bring it up to get to this corner and I'm going to try to make sure that so here's my three quarters line here and here's my three quarters line there so I'm going to get those at the corner so that I can get a nice square corner here okay so now you can see that it worked out it ended up basically square so now I can go ahead and just chop it off okay so this is a self binding so this little edge is going to come over which means that if you're doing this on a darker color, make sure or a lighter color, make sure that the uh, all of the line is cut off because otherwise you'll see it when it comes around. Got it. Because when we do the self binding method, the raw edge, the is raw edge is on there. Exactly. And the reason that that's okay is because cuddle doesn't, doesn't fray. fray. Got it. And once you've once you've been and given it that initial cut it won't shed after this either. right so it's going to make a little bit of a mess right here it's really not too bad at all let me flip this so i can 
turn it. So this is one of the things that with the cuddle, it will shift. And so I wouldn't be able, if this were a full size quilt, there's no way I could actually cut all the way around. This one I could, I could manipulate how I was standing and I could cut all the way around. If this were a large size quilt, I have to move this. So if I've done the whole line first, it's really easy for me to, to shift it and then recut it. And I just find that line again get it to lay out straight and go. So yeah, because it's a knit, like you were saying, because it's a knit, it's not gonna, it's not gonna fray anywhere. So it's gonna make a mess here at first, and then we'll just clean it up. Be good to go. Okay. So this is the point where it's a little bit weird because the edges don't all match up nicely, nice and neatly, but it's actually gonna work out just fine. Okay, I'm gonna see, I brought my silver pen. We're gonna see if I can mark this. There's my little corner. So now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do the regular self-binding blanket method. I'm gonna use my little template here. I'm going to hope my pen works out. Okay. Oh, we can see it. So there's my little line. Come over here. And what this should work out as is that this is going to cross right where my by my batting ends. Yep. So can you see that? Two for two. So, two for two. <laughs> Yay. So good. It's nice when it works out. All right. I'm going to come around here. Do the same thing. It's kind of a nice way to double check that your math is is working. Right. So if it doesn't work and all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, that's not right. You can go ahead and trim it. You can make a different size corner. Um, there were a couple of them that I've done that I ended up not having as much backing to do a bigger corner. Like I wanted to do an inch and it wasn't going to work. So I had to do like a half inch. Okay. You can give it a good shake. Shake it off. I think there's a song about that. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Probably not PC. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I've got my corners. Now I'm going to sew them. Finally, finally going to sew, Hawk. Can you believe right. it? Right. <laughs> Took us a while to get here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got a 9014 stretch needle in here. My polyester thread. In got gray. The, in gray this time. Um, right down the middle. Yeah. I think let's do it in gray this for this corner and then I'll switch it out to black when I'm doing the top stitching. Okay. Um, so and then it's stitch. a straight stitch. Yep. Three millimeters. You've got it at two and a half. Okay. That's the default. Okay. All right. So go. I'm going to switch it and I'm going to go ahead. So this is one of the tricks with the self binding. All right. When we're doing a larger blanket, it sometimes can be a little easier because the, the corners are bigger. But we're going to make this work. All right. You're just going to turn this over, fold it right sides together and get a little point out here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin it on either side of that line. So one of the things that's really important is using, if you're using the cuddle three for this, that you need to make sure that this edge matches. So those two, the cut edges right here, need to match really nicely. So we're going to go ahead and give this a little sew. Okay. So you're building the miter. We're doing the, the miter. Got yep. it. So I'm going to go ahead and like usual, I'm going to stick it in. I'm going to put my needle down here. Back stitch should go forward. So put my foot down. I'm just going to say a little more light in here. Okay. There you go. One more thing in your and you'll, way. And that's right. You'll notice that I've pinned it on either side of that line. And that's going to let me just sew this without actually taking any of those pins out, which is what we want. Because then I can actually get it right on those lines. Nothing gets to shift. Because as we know, Huddle likes to move. And you're using your walking foot, right? Yeah. So somebody asked if I was using the walking foot. Absolutely. I'm using the digital dual feed that's on my Crescendo. Uh, so you could probably do these little pieces without the walking foot. But I really recommend it, especially for the next part. So might as well put it on there. Leave it on there. All right. So just cut that Pretty off. much with cuddle, the only Order. time you don't recommend the walking foot or the digital dual feed is when you're going around small corners when she's doing stuffed animals and yeah. stuff like that. Other than that, everything is walking foot. Yeah, basically every time. All right, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to do all four corners like this. We're just going to work our way through. The big thing is to make sure this stays out of the way. If it's been long-armed a lot, you might have to hold this back and then pin it. I know I've had to do that a few times just to keep it out of the way it's really just because you have to sew right over that corner it can be a little bit bulky there we go. 
Okay, go ahead and take my pins out, clip my thread. And again, I have the gray thread in here. If I were doing this for real, I'd probably switch it over to a blue. Remember how I said nobody was going to call me on that phone? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I clip it about uh, half an inch here. I'm going to leave that. It's going to turn. It's just fine. Oh, look at that. All right. So we're going to leave those. Let's do the app the best. And because I've marked these, I don't have to keep things super neat. I can just work my way through. Just make sure that you're not pinning so that you have to sew over the pins, okay? Pin so that you can sew between them. Start in just a little bit, back stitch. Go forward. And watch, make sure I don't hit any of those pins. And then I wanna back stitch that inside corner as well. So I'm gonna back stitch it both. Trim that. Come on. All right, one more corner. I can tell because I'm collecting triangles. I should have one more. <laughs> yeah, sometimes when you're doing this, I tell you, it seems like there's like six corners and there's really not, there's only ever going to be four, but sometimes it feels like you've done five already. Okay, the other thing is to make sure that this point comes out to a point. Okay, so you don't want to get this folded weird. So you'll see, I don't actually check the other side, but you can totally do that where you like stab it in, check the other side, make sure that you're on the line. It's not quite perfect. I don't care. Okay. It will work out fine. You don't want it to be too far off. And the biggest thing oops, is to make sure that this is out to a point and then you're going to get your nice 45. The other thing is if you sew it and it doesn't qu work quite right, you can always sew it again a little bit better. Without even necessarily even Without taking, taking out anything out. Stitch. Yeah, that's right. what I mean. It's just resew it. Got Don't it. Don't worry about trying to take stitches out. Some people are allergic to hand sewing, and you're allergic to sewing. On sewing, yes. <laughs> it's very true. I really, I will do basically anything I can to not take stitches out. That said, I'll probably show you guys how to take stitches out, because we haven't talked about it in a while. So... I've been pretty good about not having to rip out anything <laughs> on there, the show. Which that particular great. flavor of oopsie hasn't come up in a while. <laughs> it has it. Okay, so I've got all four corners done. I trimmed them. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pop these out. So if you've got a little corner turner or point turner, go ahead and push that out. Make it nice and sharp. Because we're using the Cuddle 3 here, and because it's such a small little binding you really do want to make sure those corners are out really nicely sometimes i get a little bit lazy when i'm doing stuff with the lux cuddle because you can't tell if the corners are turned out very nicely but with this one you absolutely will be able to tell so go ahead push that up okay one more so this works really well for doing with the cuddle or with the lux cuddle okay. but you cannot do this with a cotton finish for the edge. It has to be cuddled. Okay, let me go ahead, pop those in. So the way that I've done it is that batting will go right out to the corner. Okay, because it should go right past that little intersection that we did. So what I found is this one, this one is fine, but what I have found is that sometimes this, the turnover will be a little tight. Just go ahead and open this up and trim this back a little if you need to. All right, because it should work perfectly. All right. We got all four corners in. Okay. So there we go. Now we're done. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> now we get to do it just the regular old self-binding way. So now what we're going to do is we have this little orange line that you can see here that I drew originally. Remember, that's where I want the edge to go. So I'm going to go ahead and come on in here and plop that down. Make it line up with that edge. And I'm going to pin it in position. Okay. So I'm just going to pin this edge down. I'm going to go back and I'm going to put a couple of clips in here to make it stay where I want it to. But I'm just going to pin right along the raw edge. So at these corners, sometimes they'll be a little bit wonky. Just pin it in place. Make it be where you want it to be. And keep going. Okay, so we're just going to keep lining this up along that line. You want to fold every once in a while. One of the things, too, just to keep it consistent. So one of the things that this helps with 
that we sometimes have an issue with when we're doing the bigger self-binding blankets is keeping this nice and even so that it's consistent width. This one is going to stay consistently three quarters of an inch because I know exactly where I'm supposed to line it up to. And that will be three quarters of an inch away from the edge. Okay, so that's very, to me, I feel like that's really helpful for me to keep a nice straight edge that I don't ever have to me measure that again to make sure that it stayed consistent because it just does. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see if I take this, I'm just going to fold it up right against the batting. So that's the way that is. So this gets folded right <coughs> against there. Pardon me. Okay. So that's a great that's a great note, right? On normal binding, you would want to have a little extra fabric, and you would roll that that binding fabric under Correct. again. But because this is knit fabric, it's totally fine to leave the raw edge. Yep. Works great with C3, and it works probably even better with a Lux cuddle. It works really nicely. I yeah. really. I actually really, really like it with the C3 on um, the cotton quilts. I think it's super pretty. This is the first way I actually did it was with the Navy even. Uh, when I did the first one and I didn't have as many methods of working with Cuddle at that point. This is just after I started working for the company. So like almost six years ago. I think I've told you this story. And the binding was so bad that I took it around as an example of how <laughs> it could look if you didn't do it right uh, and then I took it out a few years later and redid it um, but it actually once you get the hang of binding with the cuddle three it's actually okay so you can see here I'm doing the same thing like I normally do that I kind of pinning in the middle and then separating it this is about how far apart I like to pin them is about a hand's width so I'll pin it here and then I'm going to pin it in between and get it to be nice and straight the reason I do that is I can kind of figure out where the middle is because it sits pretty I don't know what the word is for this, but it like it sits up and I can see where the middle is. It's nice. And I just fold it straight over and then I can keep it consistent between those pins. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just pinning this in. So if you're doing a wider binding, having the clips is nice. I find that the smaller wonder clips are a little, they distort things a little bit more. But these jumbo clips, so these jumbo clips from Clover are fabulous and they'll just come right in here and they'll hold right down and they'll hold that whole thing down because these are really long. So every once in a while, I'm going to stick these in, make sure that it's staying in place. And again, I can make the fabric be exactly where it's supposed to be, which is fabulous. Okay. Do the same thing here. Pull this nice and straight. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put a few more little clips in here just to hold it just a little bit. So at this point, if you've done any binding with cuddle, the self-binding or regular binding, you'll know that usually we use a big wide zigzag. And we're going to zigzag this down all along the edge. You have a couple of options with this and you could zigzag it. I don't particularly love the zigzag on the uh, C3. So I'm going to show you this. Okay, so this was two different ways. We're going to do the serpentine um, when I do it here because this is my favorite. So this is the serpentine stitch, which most uh, most machines will have this, especially any of the higher end machines will have a nice serpentine stitch. It looks like an S usually, and sometimes it will be a really tight looking little S on your machine. So what it, when you on choose the, the stitch, yeah, well, on okay. the screen, it will look like a really tight little S. Um, and it doesn't look like this. So I know a lot of people have said, oh, my machine doesn't do that. And it actually does. If um, if Linda is here today, she might know what the Bernina stitch is for it. And because uh, it's one that definitely confuses people. So there she is. I saw her. Um, good. So she she is definitely in the in the comments. Uh, and uh, good. There we go. Yeah. So I want to know what the what the uh, figure it out. The serpentine stitches, what number that is on a Bernina, because that's definitely a question I get a bunch. Okay, so that's what I did here was just the serpentine stitch. This one was a blanket stitch. Okay, so I can't remember. Michael, did I put the numbers in these for this? I think I put in some banners. We can see what the what the numbers were. So we'll see if you can find those. Um, and we'll do a serpentine over here. What I like to do is try it out a little bit. Let me see if I can find, what did I do with the scrap of blue? I'm just going to cut just a little chunk here. Okay. 
And really, I suggest that you do this before you sew your quilt so that you can decide what you like. All right, because what I have on my machine isn't necessarily what you're going to have on your machine. So we're going to come over here. Down here we've got, so this, um, nope, that's not mine. Is it on this one? There it is. Okay, so mine says serpentine stitch, has a little S shape. Over here it looks much different. All right, and that even looks different than what the final, the actual stitch looks like. All right. So it really is just a matter of trying it out and being like, does that work? And what we're trying out is different with length combinations. Right. So um, this one is my default now that I use for cuddle, which is four millimeters wide and 1.8 millimeters long. Uh, yeah. I was trying to think. I remember I did a smaller, a smaller one on something else, but this is the one I like. So let's give this a try and see what it looks like. We'll switch the thread out in just a second. This way we can see what the, the gray looks like. Okay. So that nice big zigzag or serpentine, that's the size I like. So this is where I start. And then I start to adjust it if I want it to be a little bit tighter, a little bit different. So you can adjust this in a few different ways. So the length of it, you can want, if you watch here, I'm going to change the length and make it longer or make it shorter. So, pardon me. Okay, so if I want to do it like this, this is going to end up being really tight little S. So you can see one of the things about it is that it takes a lot longer too. So I like to use big stitches because it's faster. All right, so you can kind of see that, that little S in there that's really nice and tight. Mm -hmm. And that might be the look that you're going for and you're willing to take a long time to get around. So it's almost like a smooth zigzag. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is very much so. So, if you leave it long, will when you wash it, will it roll if it's not caught on all of the edge? Um, she asked if it would, if the edges will roll a little bit. So, if you look on here, you've got these little parts that are pulled up. Yeah, and I can kind of pull them up and push them up. But as long as you are actually getting this fairly close to the edge, you're not going to have a problem. I've never had them roll right here. So that might be something that would happen with a bunch of washing and wear. I'm not really sure, but I like the way that this looks in the meanwhile. And my quilts, so generally I like this, but my quilts aren't heavily used. They're, you know, heavily viewed. That's really, <laughs> that's really it. So I can't really tell nice. you what the long term is. This would hold it down much better. So this was the blanket stitch, but this one definitely took a little while. I will tell you the trick with this too was that the blanket stitch on mine actually goes the other direction. So I was able to do a little flip flop. i show you over here. So we'll come back to this stitch in a second. So was that? Nope. Where was it at? I think it's in here. Okay, here we go. So that was the stitch that I did. It's called the quilting applique. It's a quilting stitch. applique stitch. So that's what I was doing. It's like an it's like a blanket stitch. Okay. So that's what I did. The original stitch for this, I switched it around. I can't remember what I did now, but you can make it so that these are shorter together, which I like better. So these little lines are closer. You can make these wider apart. But you can see on this one, I needed my stitches to go that way. Okay. Oh, yep. So this was, they were going this way. And I was like, do I have to sew it backwards? Because I don't really want to do that. So what I did on mine, I have this funky little thing that I can push. Mirror. And it will flip your stitches over. So do it again. Stitches, push it again. Think. Yeah. So now the stitches are backwards. I'm like, oh, I want them to go the other way. I just flip flopped it over. Got it. All right. So that was kind of a cool little thing. I found that out a while ago that I could do that. Somebody told me I could just mirror it. I was like, what? That's amazing. So to complicate things for Bernina, the serpentine stitches different numbers for different models. Okay, never mind. So, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna. Thanks, Linda. But, good luck, everybody. Good luck. <laughs> but do look for it, and it will look kind of like a little, a little S. And sometimes it kind of almost looks more like um, a three-step zigzag. So make sure to look for the names. Like on mine, if you look here, you can see the name. It'll come up here on the name. And I know Bernina's will do that too. They'll tell you names on a lot of them. So mm -hmm. check out your manual. See what it is. Janome's have it. You know, I was going to say Juki's, but the only Juki's I know are really straight stitch machines. So probably. Okay. 
So now we're going to go ahead and zig or uh, serpentine it because that's what I know I like. All right. So it's on it. It's on a four wide. Back to the beginning. Long, there we go. Right? Serpentine. Four okay. and 1.8. Okay. Now I know the way that this works because I've practiced it and I've tried is that my, when my needle comes down on the far side, it's going to be over here. Okay, so it's going to line up with this line. So this is something where you're going to have to learn Let me see how close I can get. your machine a little bit. And I think I'm going to leave the gray in so you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this to stitch over. So you can see my needle is moving over to the left just a little bit. She's hand cranking I'm it. Just, yeah, hand cranking You can't it. see what's going on off camera. Okay, so now it's basically as far over as it's going to go in the serpentine stitch. So that's where I'm going to start up at the corner. So I've got it basically in the far left placement. I'm going to stick it right up into that corner. You know what? Let's flip the, let's flip the foot out. You were going to do the old Yeah. Mm -hmm. about that. If I can find it. Oh, no. There it Did is. Did all I that think. sewing. No. It's over the side. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope, that's that one. Oh. oh, there it is. So many feet. <laughs> it's still not enough. I keep buying more. Oh, but it'll do that. Oh, it'll do that. Okay. So let's try that. It's not right. Oh, I know. It fell down there. <laughs> Rush. There we go. Okay. Let's try it again. We'll stick this up in the corner. There we go. That's such a better view. All right. So I'm trying to stick it so that my needle, when it comes down, it's going to come down right in the corner of that. <coughs> And that's where I'm going to cut, try to keep it the whole time. Question is, uh, there's a question. Will okay. this work with a regular straight stitch? And I think I could uh, say the answer is yes, but you're going to have to be really, really good at straight stitch. Yeah. So, that, <laughs> yeah. Actually, why don't we do that? So, we could do each side differently. Okay. Let's do that. And I'll show you what the difference is and why I choose what I choose. And that might be really helpful. Okay. So, we're going to get this to come over. And it's going to go. Over there, I'm going to use my stiletto to hold it where I want it to be. What I want is when it comes over to this left side, that it would just come off. There we go. That it would just come off the side. And what I want it to do is hit so that when it comes around here, it comes off bink right there and comes back around. So this, you can hear it kind of puncturing. It's, um, because if I'm, if I remember right, let me put my needle up. Yep. Yeah, this is the 9014 stretch needle. Um, so make sure. So <laughs> I do have a 9014 quilting needle, which is this one here, which is blue and green. So it's a green stripe on top and a blue stripe on bottom. And that one is a 9014 quilting needle, which also works really well when you're mixing the two. So oh. normally when somebody is doing quilting on cuddle, they will often use the 9014 quilting because you're going through all these fabrics that are not cuddle and they seem to work. That seems to work nicely. That's what I use. You don't get skip stitches like no. you would if you were using a universal needle. On no, cuddle. on okay. this one that everything I did was with the 9014 uh, quilting needle. Oh. So that was interesting because I wanted to try it and see if I would get skip stitches. I did not. So that was good. That said, when the next day I was making the strip quilt, I forgot to change the needle out and it skipped stitches like crazy. And I couldn't figure out why it was skipping stitches. So it because it was only straight. cuddle. Because it was only cuddle. So if you're mixing, you can, you can mix it or you can change it to a quilting needle. This one, we'll see if it does anything because it is a 9014 stretch. All right. Okay, so it's making that little extra sound because it's actually pushing through the cotton mm -hmm. as opposed to puncturing it. Puncture, you got yeah. it, as opposed to having a nice sharp point. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's a little thuddy sound that's in there. So we'll see if it makes any difference. Okay, so when I get up to the corner, then I'm going to find a spot and I'm going to turn. Okay, are, you using, are you using pivot again? I am using pivot again. Oh, you're a total pivot convert now. I am. Awesome. Okay. So you can, I can hardly see it in, in real life. Hardly I can see hardly see the, the stitches there. And that's with the gray thread on the blue fabric. So, you know, there's that. It's in there somewhere. Hold it really nice and um, beautiful along the edge. Okay, so let's do 
Um, I want to do a zigzag and we'll show you what the zigzag looks like. So normally when I do a zigzag, we're going to do a, do a five and a five. I'm going to make this a size uh, smaller. I'm going to do a four and a half and a four and a half because I kind of like it a little bit better when I can see it if it's smaller. So one of the things I will tell you about doing the zigzag that I don't particularly like is that if it gets a little bit caught up, say it gets stuck underneath your walking foot just a little bit, it will start to get smaller stitches and you can see it. So the zigzag is very apparent as to if they are, if it's even or not. And I'll show you, if you can remember, I'll show on the serpentine how that happened. I did end up having to take stitches out once because it got caught and then the serpentine got really short. But it's a problem I find with the zigzag more often than other stitches. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make it do it just a little bit. We'll get it caught up underneath here so it doesn't move very well. Or like you're forcing it to Yeah, I, like it got stuck under there and this happens sometimes, right? And you're like, oh poop, and then you oh. pull it out. Okay, maybe people don't always say that, but I do. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get this to the end. I'm fairly certain everybody has a variation. <laughs> yes. Okay, so now if I turn this, there we go. So now you can see this is where it got, I got it stuck in there. So you can see where the zigzag got kind of weird. So the zigzag just shows more, and you can, I mean, obviously it shows more. I can see the stitches in this really a lot and I cannot see it here. Okay. So there's a difference with that one. Okay. All right. So let's do the, we'll do the um, blanket stitch. And I thought I had, a, I had thought I had a banner in there for it because I can't remember what I had used before. Let's see what this is. Let's see what it does. Okay. We're going to wait. And then... Okay. So this is a three long. So like I said, Test it before you do it. Here I am. Let's not test it. Okay. <laughs> oh, maybe I saved this one. Okay. All right, Speedy. All right, we have a we have a whole another side to do. So this where I can see it, I got to move this over. I think, and I'm just going to hold it here with my little stiletto. And what I'm trying to do. So this one is a little bit requires a little more being careful. Because this needle needs to come down here. If it comes down on the blue, it's going to smash it down. And you don't want that. So you want it to come down right next to your binding. And then it's going to go over and grab the binding. All right. Okay. No one, sorry. Check a message. How was it? Um, I okay. think I didn't have it. Yeah. Oh no, my bobbin. Oh no, my poppin. <laughs> bobbin chicken. Bobbin chicken. Let's do it. All right. I got, I got pre wound ones, but we're going to do this thing where we just keep forcing it. Somebody else play this game where you're like, no, no, you're going to keep going. Because if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. Poor audience. <laughs> Fine. I will stop it. Hold on. <laughs> okay, so here's the pre-wound bobbins. They're pretty great. I got them from a Cali Quilt Co. And look how many bobbins I have wound and ready for me. Okay, not a panic now. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out. So with that said, it's only a white bobbin, but you know, this is just a practice. That in there. So one thing we'll, while we're talking about pre-wounds, this one is not, this is one that I wind myself and um, I don't have it marked, but I can tell the difference between the two, but make sure that if you are using pre-wounds that you throw that plastic away when you're done, okay? They cannot be rewound. And the reason is because that plastic bobbin is not very strong. And um, do you remember I showed you a picture? My mom did this once and she rewound the bobbin because my mom's a sewer. Hi mom. And um, so she rewound it. And what happened is it actually popped apart. 
So she rewound it here and started winding, winding, winding. And then this part just totally broke off. And then it just kept winding and like going everywhere and craziness. It turned into so a, a nest. It was. I, I remember that. I remember, remember the like, picture? Like, up, up, up here, there was like a ball of, of thread. thread yeah. <laughs> it was not good. She said, and I was, she was like, I've never had this happen before. And I was like, I've never seen that before. And we figured out that's what it is. So do not use your pre-wound bobbins. Again, that's not what they're made for. They're just for quick and easy right at the moment. Okay, so now we're just going to finish up this corner here. I'm going to stop. I'm actually going to cut my thread because what I'm going to do, so now we're going to switch it to a straight stitch. Remember we were talking about that. So we're going to do that, and I'm going to switch my sole to the stitch in the ditch one. Okay, and this is the best way of top stitching anything, in my opinion, because I can see where the edge is supposed to be. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to stick this in here. What I want is this little bar is just going to run down right down the edge of my fabric. It's I'm going to move. It's hard to see. See if I can get some different light in there for a second, at least for a minute. Okay, okay. so here, see if I can do it. So this is the metal bar right here. And it's going to run right along this this edge here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to move my needle over. So we're going to switch it back to a straight stitch. Okay. I'm going to switch it up to a three and a half because I want it to be a nice top stitch. So normally I use a three on this machine, but I want it to be a little bigger. So I'm going to do it to a 3.5. And then I'm going to shove my needle. Well, I'm not really going to shove it. I'm going to make it move. I always have to look which way it's actually moving. I can't remember. Okay. So I'm going to do up to a two and see if I like that. Nope, I'm going to do a little more. Okay, because basically what I can do is I can look here and I can see where my needle is going to come down and how much edge. So supposedly that's going to be two and a half or two and a half millimeters away from this center bar. We'll see if it works. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a little lock stitch. Get that secured, and then I'm just going to walk this through. Can I move this light? You can get the light out of your face again. <laughs> okay. There we go. I'm going to take that pin out so it doesn't get in my way. And I'm going to hold this in place, and we're just going to do a little straight stitch right down the edge here. Okay, so one of the things about trying all these different things is, uh, one, it helps you and also helps me just to see what the differences are between them. So this is the, the trying things out. When you take a class with me, a lot of times with the self-binding blanket especially, I want you to try out all the things. And um, this is a great example of doing that sort of thing on a bigger one. You could absolutely do this tiny little one like I'm doing here just to practice things, figure out what you like, and then keep track of those um, machine settings. What do you like? What, what's the look that you like? And a lot of machines will let you save them, which is why my serpentine is saved the way it is, because I found the one I liked. Just gonna come right along here, come right off the end, and do a little lock stitch again. Okay, there we go. So this is why I don't really prefer the straight stitch. So I, I think I did a pretty good job keeping a straight line. Okay, thank you. But <laughs> you can see it still looks uneven. Okay, so you can't, you probably can't, can you get in a little closer so we can see the stitches maybe? Yeah, there we go, there's a good example. So right here, it's a little bit wider than right there. So even though I'm holding my fabric really nicely and I've got the foot in, it still wobbles. And I can see that so much more on a straight stitch than I can ever see on any of the other stitches. Okay, so let's go over these again. So this was a straight stitch, not my favorite but definitely something that people like, okay? This one is the blanket stitch. We can get the light in there so you can see it a little bit mm -hmm. more. Okay, so there's the blanket stitch. This one is a little bit wider than the one I did before. Okay, so this one I just narrowed it because I liked that look a little bit better. But the blanket stitch I think is nice, all right? And pretty easy to keep consistent. Just keep that stitching because you see how it, the stitches are here. So then when it comes up, that rides right along that line. Got okay. it. Okay. Yeah, so that was so actually, can you show that again? Mm -hmm. That's that's really helpful. So what it does is it takes like three stitches and then does one over. So as long as these aren't catching on here, it will look really good. Once they start catching on here, it looks 
less good. Less good, like Mike Milton <laughs> right there. Um, yeah, less good. But that so other this, word you said earlier. <laughs> yeah. So, there, <laughs> so this is the zigzag. This was a four and a half by four and a half zigzag. And the thing that I don't love about it is just you can see it more and you can see it when it gets caught up. All right. So that's um, the, and this is my favorite is the serpentine, which just kind of hides. And I love the way that that works. Okay. Okay. That's a great little sample now. I'm keeping this one. I mean, right. it's that it's that <laughs> yummy fabric too, by the way. Who, who makes that fabric? The again? fabric is Clothwork. So this, we chose this design. I'll show you a little bit more when we look at these again. So this is from Clothworks. I'm really grateful for them working with us. It was really nice of them. Sent me some fabric that was perfect for our little adventures here. Because life is better when we're camping. Which is every day. Every day. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let me. Uh, what you got? Yeah. What if you change the pressure the pressure on your foot? Uh, it will let the fabric. She asked about changing the pressure foot pressure, and it will change how easy the fabric goes through it. So if it, you're struggling with it and it's not moving through, you can release that. Otherwise, I don't ever change it. So yeah, I leave it. I leave it the way that it is until I have an issue, and then I fix it. So this is the other one. This one I just used four of those little um, the little panels that are in there. Stuck them together. So again, this is one. I put it together. I quilted like it. It was sashing around the edge, right? Yep. This was the sashing. And I made this a little bit wider so that I could bind it and it would hit an even, like that. this would be even with this. Okay. So I quilted this one, just to remind you, I quilted this one just through the batting. And then I put it in here like a self-binding blanket and did the blanket, uh, blanket stitch edge or the quilter's applique, I think is what it said on my machine. Got it. Okay. So I think there's actually two settings on there. So I'll need to finish this one. We'll have that because we're ready for adventure. All right. And this was the other one. This is the bigger one that I did that is quilted through all the layers. All right. And this is the same thing where I did. I just took those little squares. I did a, um, a square and a square block pattern is what I did. Put them together with some sashing. And then I did this quilting. So if this the serpentine, if you look at it, so look at this little part right here and how tight that is and now compare that come down here see how that moves along nice and easy so i could see like even here here you see the difference so this one is nice and if tight you point and this it out easier yes yeah. so i can see the difference right? <laughs> stop doing this quilters stop so pointing out your example. mistakes nobody cares so, but nobody my, noticed my but point you is that that is easier for me to hide than a zigzag that has gotten too wide or too too short so this one it still looks really nice i can't tell that it got weird um until i point it out to you but mm -hmm. otherwise like i don't see them go oh there's a spot i did have once where it got caught up underneath it when i was making this and i did have to take some stitches out which we do need to show um but then i zigzagged all the way around it worked out beautifully and this one, I actually, I actually put it all together. I spray basted it together. And then I did the quilting. I would recommend that you quilt it first, if at all possible, just because you have less room for it to shift. Okay. So don't measure out your batting and your backing first. Do the quilting, then start measuring things out. All right. And I think that that makes it a little bit more um, consistent in the outcome. All right. So Wait, the other thing. Show a close up of that for. You which or which part of you? Back, because you're oh. backing where you said you quilted all the way through. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So she just wanted to see the backing a little bit better, and then I did some straight stitching just to try to make it nice and even. Quilting isn't my my forte. Uh, could you leave the batting out and just have the uh, cuddle and the cotton? So can you leave the batting out and just have the quilt top and the cuddle? And do a lot of quilting. Uh, you could, but you wouldn't need to do any quilting with it if it's just batting. If there's no batting in it, batting is the, that's why we quilt, is to hold the batting together. The other thing is it adds some loft and some interesting little um, designs on it, okay? So here's one other way that you can do this. Because for me, one of the things is, is if you have a large quilt stick, all these pieces, blah, 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 it gets heavy. And um, you might not want to do all that quilting with it. So we have another way that you can do this. So I've done one corner. Here's a little, this is more from that, um, that collection. Okay, super nice, yummy, super soft, not quilted at all. It's just stitched. I did a big zigzag with the blacks. So you can see those zigzags. Okay, over here is the gray. So it hides a little bit better. This one is done, if I don't want to quilt it at all, because quilting is not more forte, 
piecing. I love piecing. I love piecing. I don't love quilting. She's a, top, she's a topper. I'm a topper. So I send my quilt off. There you go. Have it. Good luck. What do you, you call it? Quilt by check? Quilt by check. Yes. <laughs> so that's how I do it. So this one, I can use cotton if I want the same heft as if it were quilted. So that's the thing for me is that I don't like the lightness of the cotton next to the heaviness of the cuddle. I want the front to kind of have the same weight. I want to say veracity, and I don't think that's the right word, but I want the same oomph to the front of it as I do the back of it. And so when I'm doing cuddle and cuddle, they have the same. When I'm doing a quilted cotton and cuddle, they're basically the same. But if I do just cotton, it's super flimsy and it won't stick as well. So I did a little bit of experimenting. And this is what I figured out is that I can back the cotton with another piece of cuddle. Whoa. And it gives the weight, <laughs> the middle, it gives us a really nice weight that will still be flip floppy. And I just zigzag it down. And you, all just, the way you just use the, the SF. Um, I just uh, use the, basting spray. Oh, the basting spray. Got it. Yep. Spray. The yep. So just the 505, it just basted it together. So and now it will have that same heft and the same softness as it would if it were quilted, but I don't actually have to quilt any of this. What happens when you wash this though, right? Because that stuff is, that stuff washes out. Right. So, so then you're going to end up with three layers that are separate. Right. So let's, let's pull it apart over here. Just, just so you can I'm see. Yep, yeah, exactly. Figuring out what, what. So what now it looks like this. Like. So now they're going to okay. be separate, but it's kind of like the same because if you've done a cuddle and cuddle blanket, they fall apart. So this, the front and the back are loose. This becomes the front together. Got it. All right. Yep. So the, the cotton will kind of hold to this in a way that just lays nicely and it gives it the same oomph. I like it. Okay. So that's another option, especially if you want to do something where, well, like this is a super cute print that I want to cover. I want the whole thing that I don't want to piece it. I don't want to quilt it down and like disturb the design. If you wanted to do a panel or if you wanted to do um, some novelty cotton, that sort of thing, a border print where you don't really kind of want to mess with the the print of the fabric is what you love. This is a great way of doing it. It's just put a piece of cuddle behind it. It doesn't need to be quilted to the back piece. So it can be loose. It lets you use that other piece without doing the extra um, quilting part of it. And then you get to do still do the self-binding blanket. So you could actually do this. This one I did a two-inch border because, oh, we didn't talk about the fabric. Um, I did a two-inch border because mm -hmm. this is a little, that, that design is two inches wide. What so is what, that? So what fabric is this? <laughs> that what fabric is, is it, Hawk? Lux Cuddle Hawk. It's Lux Cuddle In Hawk fabric. Pecan. Pecan. Pecan yep. or pecan, depending yeah, on the depending where you are. <laughs> yes, exactly. So this is the Lux Cuddle Hawk. With, with the, the E. It is, yeah. It is named after him. And if you've seen Hawk, which I, I find has a hair that does a little bit of this. Ridiculous. Right right. Okay. Cool. So this is the Lux Cuddle Hawk, <laughs> which I really like. <laughs> which I really like. So I chose a two inch border for this one because these little strips are two inches. So sometimes you're going to choose it because it's, you know, the type of fabric that it is. We had another Lux Cuddle quilt. Here it is. So I wanted to show you, you actually can. So this is one of the questions. So that we get is, can you quilt with it if it's Lux Cuddle? And you'll see that, that all the examples that I did today that you could see the quilting on it was with a Cuddle 3. I personally prefer my quilts with the Cuddle 3 because I can see all the designs that I love that so much. But this is one that they have that is with a panel in the middle. Okay. But this one is quilted with Lux Cuddle. Oh, yeah. It's, all right. Do you, so, is this tangerine or ginger? I think this might be ginger. Okay. But you can, add, you can see it absolutely shows up just in a different way. So it doesn't lose all of the design because of the, um, the Lux Cuddle, which is sometimes a question. You could absolutely go in here and unpick all of this if you felt like it. But why would you? No. It's beautiful. So we want to be able to see that design and we want to see um, and still have the big, thick texture. So you could absolutely quilt it like this with the Lux Cuddle on the back, bring that around to the front. I would do, if I were gonna do a Lux Cuddle self-binding, I would do a minimum of a one inch border though, just because of all the extra fluff of the Lux Cuddle, but I think it would be too hard to do it a half an inch. It would, don't do it on your first round, okay. So that's an advanced option. That's an advanced option. So let me show you again <laughs> what it. we've got here, okay. Uh, so this is the one where I didn't I didn't want to quilt it at all. I just use cuddle behind it. Quick question, okay. just to reiterate, 
when you uh, use the spray mm -hmm. uh, adhesive, right? Uh, this is the fuzzy side here. This is the fuzzy side. The reason, okay, so the reason I did this, this is a good question, actually. I thought about it when I was doing it. Because when I do a self binding blanket with cuddle and cuddle, if I put the two backings together, they, I know that works great. They hold together just fine. I can hold it uh, up, okay. put it together. Like they, they hold together nicely. They sit together nicely. Uh, and so I didn't want to put, I wanted to keep the back to back. And I thought this will add the softness to here that right. I could feel it be a little poofy on this side and not slick underneath this, which would kind of let the cotton hold to it. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. So that's the so, answer. So, so there was some this thought is, this is, the, this is the, the fluffy the, side. The front side. And then you put the back side. Exactly. So it's still, it's still going to be wrong together. side to wrong side. Wrong sides yeah. together inside. Right. So that's one way of doing it. So just get some extra cuddle. I have seen people quilt the cuddle and it's beautiful. So you can absolutely quilt that inside of here. And it's a really nice loft. You don't have to Instead quilt it of like awesome. basically just doing the whole sandwich like you normally would, but just with cuddle as the batting. As batting. Yep, exactly. Okay. So this is one that was long armed and then self bound. Okay. This is a one inch border with the sparkle cuddle glitter, navy and silver, which they have here at Bits and Pieces. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one is done, and this was, um, can't remember, this is uh, old fabric from Latifa Saphir. So it's no longer available. This one, on the other hand, is available here at the shop. Okay. And this is the Living the Dream fabric from Clothworks that is done, was domestic quilted on my, on my machine right here. Okay. I just quilted it. And then we did, um, I did a one inch border on that one. This one is a half an inch with that same Clothworks fabric. That I did with a half an inch with the blanket stitch. This one was three quarters of an inch on a crazily pieced uh, with a zigzag, the serpentine, the blanket stitch, and a straight stitch. All right. Okay? So all, the all of those are options that you can do. It's absolutely a fabulous way of backing a quilt. So if you are a quilter and you love making the top send them off to a quilter who will long arm it for you and then do the self binding finish on it it's really it's my favorite and um i there's nothing like having cuddle on the back of your quilt like honestly there's just nothing it's magical okay <laughs> so i do that with all of my quilts um that said my long armor in portland has another quilt on the way to her with some more fabric because i'm making more so i love them so much they're just really wonderful um i think that is all is there any other questions in the from the audience here Okay, so uh, we need to pick a winner. Let's do that. Okay. Who shared? Stacy A shared. Stacy, thank you so much for sharing the video. You will get a beginner box if you uh, message us. So message, message us through Facebook. Give us your name, mailing address, phone number, email, all the good stuff. We will send a kit out to you, beginner box, which is a fabulous little kit. It's one of my favorites. We will be taking a break for um, three weeks, actually, we won't have any shows for three weeks. And we will be back on for a big special event on July 12th, 13th, 14th. Um, I think that's it. I can't remember which one Tuesday starts on. <laughs> so it's either 11, 12, 13 or 12, 13, 14. The Tuesday, we'll be back on the Tuesday. Um, Michael probably knows. <laughs> is the 12th. July 12th, we'll be back for a three-day event to kick off the new softer movie, which you've been seeing little bits of it before the show starts, a little um, previews of the movie. That will be kicking off that week, and we're going to do a special project. It's really easy to see it. Can you see it really nice? You really, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was right there. All right. He's been hanging out with us the whole time, so we'll be back in a few weeks. We're going to do three weeks, Bye, and buddy. we're going to do this guy. Just super fun, a new pattern, and you'll get to see how it relates to the movie. Oh, when oops, boom, there we go. Super cute. Stay, stay. So, we're gonna be back <laughs> then, um, uh, making that project. So, that will be a special one, like I said, a three day, or we're gonna walk through the whole thing about how to make a little stuffed robot, which is great. And then, we're gonna do a series of summer shorts over the summer. So, Hawk and I will be off the road for um, a couple of months and then we'll be back. So, if Michael wants to put up the list of the shops, we'll be back in the fall starting August 30th. We're gonna start in Ohio and we're gonna make our way obviously around the country. Um, if you've watched it over the last few weeks, we've listed them all out obviously, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin. The new one that's on there, we finally got a place in Minnesota. Well, we have two of them in Minnesota. This one's in the Minneapolis area. We're going to be at So Trendy 
And then we'll be obviously another place in Minnesota, in Iowa, Kansas, Texas, Washington, Oregon, and California. So we have a big long series of workshops that will be coming up in the fall. So if you are in any of those areas, you can come see us. You can check it out at the stores that are listed. They will have the uh, the signups there. And that's when we'll be back, right? Yeah. So who it's going to be a doozy so i'm getting ready and like yeah making samples and i am excited we're going to have a great series of classes this fall so if you have an opportunity to come come find us out on the road please do it will be uh it will be a lot of fun we're very much looking forward to it all right is that that's it is that everything hey thanks so, everybody here in the live thank studio you. Audience. thank you to Vincent, to Vincent pieces I appreciate Liz over at Bits and Pieces here. And uh, please do check out their website, check out their Facebook, all that good stuff. Thanks for having us. It's been awesome. And uh, we will see you in a few weeks. Yep. All right. Okay. Until then, happy sewing.